10 ways to win all of your days. And bef- before I, 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 um, I get into it, there's a story. There's this, there's this man that he, he had a goal of changing the world. He wanted, he wanted to change. He just, he just wanted to change the world. He wanted a better place. And for years of his life, man, it, it, it's, it's it was just working towards changing the world, changing the world, changing the world. And you know, he, he had he had zero success. And he scaled down his his plan a little bit, and he said, "I right, you know, can't change the world. So right, I'm gonna change my country." So, all right, so that was a new goal, and you know, my work towards changing country, doing all type of things. I reached out to people, just just doing a lot of things to create impact to change his country. Failed miserably. I said, right, "Cool, can't change the country." And another one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change my city. Same, same, same. It's that I make some progress and I do some things and I work towards putting in these things and. I put late nights and a lot of effort to change the city. And again, he failed miserably. I said, all right, all right, couldn't change my city. All right, cool. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my town. So he start launching some projects and you know, he put together uh, foundations and all type of things. So, yo, I want to change the town. And that didn't work either. I said, all right, you know? I know what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change my family. And you know, he, 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 he did everything that he could that he thought would allow him to change his family. And again, he failed miserably. And on his deathbed, he realized, uh, Jano, if I had first work on changing me, maybe that, that incredible change with a with a, a little fire under the people, my family, and they'd be so inspired by the change that, you know, I'd, I'd have changed my family. And this renewed family, they change the family when they start going to the town and the people start seeing how, they, how the family moving right now. They would, it would be inspiring so much that potentially could have changed the town. And you know, all the incredible things that's happening in town, probably, the word probably spread in different towns and the next thing you know, there was a city change. And the spark from the change in the city could have inspired the country to change. And that change in the country could eventually inspire the world to change. So it starts with you. It starts with the person in the mirror. And I, I say that to say this because, you know, um, a miniature minute A bunch of miniature minutes lead up to an incredible day. And you stack up a bunch of incredible days, you you, you have an incredible month and put those incredible months together, you have an incredible year and have enough in the incredible years. And you have an incredible life. So to have an incredible life, you can bro- broke it down to the, the smallest, it's just a lot of incredible days. So if we can figure that way, if we win each day consistently, it's going to lead to an incredible life. So that's why we're doing this ten, this ten ways to to win your day and forward. To win all your days, that's pretty much what I just said. To win all your days starts by winning today. So, so the goal of this, if you start today, start tomorrow, win, win today, and then win tomorrow, and win the next day, and win the next day, and win the next day, win the next day, win the next day, and <laughs> life is incredible. The first thing is, is you have to be be intentional. You have to be intentional of, of, about what you're going to do. You have to decide that you're going to do it. And let me let me um share a story. So. They have a promotion going on for our team where if we if 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 you rank up to silver or above in the month of may if you're ruby or above or anybody that puts in 10 personal agents and get all of them active and your qv totals up to three thousand, you get to go to isaac's house june 10th right oh 
I was I wanted to go, but it, it wasn't necessarily on my radio. If I if I hit Ruby, I said I'd go. But personal wise, anybody we brought in, because we realized that you with with secrets compliant, we only you only you only need two persons. You don't need a bunch of persons, not not like our previous company. So what we've been doing is like if we get personals, we just give it to somebody. Somebody that, that needs the help, that deserves the help, more importantly. Right? So well, two weeks ago, Matt, Matt reached out to me and said, yo, he needs me to be at that, that event. Ruby and as close as I like it to be. So the only the, the one way I could guarantee which was in my control that I could be at the event is putting in 10 personals, make sure they're active, and make sure the volume is at 3,000. So when Matt, when Matt, when Matt Myers called and says they need to do something, you know, there's no, you just got, you got to do it, right? So I, I decided that I was going to do it. So now I have a goal in my mind. I know ex exactly what I need to do it because, I mean, it's, it's, just num it's just numbers, right? And as you guys know, I've been called making 100 calls. I knew if I call 100 people a day, I'm, 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 I'm going to get some agents in. So we, we put in more than 10 agents and we hit the goal. But if I was intentional about it, it wouldn't have happened. If, 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 if it wasn't on the forefront of my mind, I wouldn't have hit it. Another example, let's say, let's say you decide to, tomorrow you want it, or today you want, you want to eat curry chicken, you want to cook curry chicken. You never, you never ever cook curry chicken before, never. You know, because you, you made the decision that, listen, I'm doing curry chicken tonight. You're, gonna, you're, gonna, you're probably going to reach out to your, your friend that, Make curry chicken, very good at curry chicken. I mean, you go go online, you go go with a recipe how to make curry chicken. But at the end of the day, tonight you're gonna have curry chicken because you made the decision and you were intentional about it. Had you never thought about curry chicken, if that didn't cross your mind, you wouldn't be eating curry chicken tonight. You'd be eating the regular thing you all does eat. Maybe you have a shaking greens, I don't know. But my point is, you have to decide and be intentional about what you decide to do. And it's the same thing about winning your days. It has to be at the forefront of your mind. I'm going, to, I'm going to win today. I have to make a decision. I'm going to win today and be intentional about it. And part of, me, part of being intentional, Psalms 118.24 says, this is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, a lot of people, when you ask them, uh, how is your day going? They, they, if they don't feel like things are going how they would like it to go, they, they probably give you a, 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 a negative response. But not so good. I mean, I just lost this person. All right, this just happened. See, if you decide for it to win the day, it has to be a great day. Regardless of the circumstances, regardless of what happens or what's happening, to win the day has to be a great day. No, no matter what I go on. So when you decide that it's a great day, external circumstances has no bearing. Jim Rohn says, I'm sure we've all heard it before, it's not the direction of the wind that decides where ship goes, but it's a set of the sail. And if we've ever had conversation, if you've ever asked me how my day is going, Everybody can echo the answer because you know one of my favorite quotes from my favorite people said was I decided a long time ago that I was gonna have a great day today. And I heard Zig Ziglar said, was it Zig or was it was it Les Brown? One of them. Zig, <laughs> Zig, 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 was Zig. It was Zig. Okay. Yeah, I said, it was, oh, it was a good day. Are you sure? And he was like, Yeah, if you if you don't believe today is a good day, and we can apply, everybody can apply this. If you do not believe that today is a good day, or every day is a good day, try missing one. <laughs> and with the other perspective, listen, it's a good day. You have to decide. If you want to win today, you want to win today, you want to win tomorrow, decide that you're going to win today and decide that you're going to win tomorrow. And an part, a important part of that is understanding it's a great day today. December 15, 2035 is a great day. January 18, 2023 is a great day. Tomorrow is a great day. Just make that decision from now. Every day going forward is a great day if you want to win every day. All right? First thing, decide. Second thing is you got to change the way you get up. Now, I got, I got this from Zig. This is, uh, if we, I think we should see the top audio. And a lot of things we're going to talk about. 
we it, Zig touched it in the audio and that, that, that audio changed my life. Because it made a lot of things clear. Then this is one of those things you have to change the way you get up. Now I'm not saying get backwards. But the, the, the way a lot of people are getting up today, it, it's counterproductive. It's not in alignment with winning today. The first thing you have to start early. You got to get up early. Kudos to Brittany. Phoenix time is early, 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 early. You up. <laughs> so kudos to you. You got to get up early. You can't be getting up at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock. It's funny to me when I talk to people who say they want to be successful and they say that they're not early people. Oh, I'm not, I'm not before 10. I'm not up before 11. You miss, you, you miss this so, you're missing so much by getting up at that time. The, the world, the, the, you're behind, you're behind. I, I, I think it's Martin and Dio says, when you sleep too much, you're, you're, um, you're competing with the dead. You gotta be alive. When you, when, for me, I, get up, I usually get up like 4.30 in the morning. And those mornings, there's so much things that you can do. Like this time with yourself, time with God. There's so much things you can do in the morning. It gets you ready and prepared. Get your mind ready and prepared to, to, to win the day as well. Proverbs 20, verse 13 says, Love not sleep. Lest thou come to poverty. Let me say it one more time. This is from the Bible, y'all. Love not sleep. Lest thou come to poverty. So if you say love sleep, you must love poverty. And that must be a goal of yours, poverty. Love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. Open thy eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. Sleep is overrated. I know they say you need sleep. Everybody say that. Sleep is overrated. <laughs> when you're big goals. I'm not, not saying don't sleep. No, you got to sleep. <laughs> get, get the time. Go to bed early. If, 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 go to bed earlier. If you, find, if you find it difficult to get up early. You might be going to bed too late. So go to bed earlier. But you want to get up earlier. You don't want to sleep too much. Right? Another thing, and Zig said this, we, 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 we used to call it the alarm clock. But from my understanding now, it's the opportunity clock. And, you know, when, when the opportunity clock goes off, this is usually what happens in the morning. The opportunity clock go off. And you're like, oh, man, it's... It's six o'clock already, or it's, it's five o'clock already. Oh, man. Oh, snooze, snooze, snooze. Man, I gotta go to bed earlier later. See, you wake up to every day like it was another yesterday, and, and yes, you wasn't overly excited about it yesterday, and you wake up today just like it was that day. So the effect is you, you have another yesterday. And yesterday wasn't a great day in your estimation. So today is not a great day in your estimation. And something I want to point out, ladies and gentlemen. See, you didn't choose to get up at that time in the morning when the opportunity clock went off. You made that decision the night before when you set the opportunity clock. So now you have an opportunity to choose how you get up. And this is how Zig recommends that you do it. I'm going to tell you what Zig, Zig says you should do it, and I'm going to tell you what I do. Right? Big up Zig. So Zig says, when the up of two the clock goes off, you should left it, touch it, tap, tap it, stop it. That's important. Turn the clock off. Then you're supposed to get up, side of the bed, and then enthusiastic clap your hands and say, oh boy, it's a great way to get up and get at it. So Zig says, and you, <laughs> if I'm to be honest with you, you know, I, I did that. I did that a couple mornings. But it just, it, it felt, it felt weird. Cause I don't really talk like that. You know what I say, I know somebody talk. If, if you talk like that, big up yourself, but I really don't talk like that. So I said, so what I started doing, I, I mean, I, I still get up and, but what me you say? Listen, up on live are the best day yet. Up on live are the best. I, I turn a little, a, little, a little jingle, up on live are the best day yet. What you say doesn't matter, the, the, get the point. What what he what what he's doing is you you you're creating a positive habit, like right from the jump of your day, you are taking control of your subconscious mind and you're you're pushing it in a in a in a positive direction. And you know when when you start your day in a positive direction, it tends to continue in a positive direction. And again, we're talking about winning the day. So change the way that you get up. The third thing is pray. Man, what you? 
But I know about me. If God no night, me no night. And you know, some people say, yeah, I don't, I don't force my beliefs on you and all this type of, I, I'm not, I will force my beliefs on you to be honest. If I'm to be 100% honest, I, I would. But for me, if God not involved, me not involved. Because I, I, came, I came from a situation, I, and I share this all the time, prior to, prior to joining Network Marketing, rejoining Network Marketing, I was in a space where I wasn't, I'm never sure if I believe in God. My thing, I would say, my thing was positive thinking. That's what that, that's what I was claiming. I remember it was crazy. And I realized it was the people I was around. So I'm like, I give thanks for this industry because it brought me back closer to my boss, right? I think a relationship with him is very important. I think a relationship with him is, is key to winning the day. And and one of the beautiful things is you, you, he'll give you what you want if you just ask for it. One of my favorite scriptures that is on the screen is Matthew 7, verse 7. I says simply just ask. I shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be open. So, wait, wait, uh, and then the mind, when they get up, I think the mind, you want prayer. And, and you definitely want to ask, ask what you want. But another thing you have to do is, is, is be thankful for the things that you have as well. Be thankful for the things that you that you have. And I think that's the fourth one. It's gratitude. Make a, and I say make a gratitude list. Gratitude is the best attitude. I showed the slide a couple of days ago and I talked to the man who complained about his old shoes until he met the man that had no feet. Many people can complain about their situations and, and maybe finances or health, right? but there are so much people, especially in this COVID time, there's so much people who are not even here today. See, we all have so many things to be grateful for. We, I'm sure we could all come with a bunch of things that, that we're not too happy with either. I mean, we, have, we both have those things, but we all have the opportunity to choose what we focus on. And I know it's a cliche, I know we heard it before, but you're about to hear it again because I'm about to say it, whatever you focus on expands. And, you know, sometimes we hear these things and, they sound good and we repeat them and we post them or quote them, but we don't apply them. We don't understand that these cliches, if it were they're true, whatever you focus on expands. And we all have a bunch of things we can be grateful for. What, what I suggest, and I do this every day, usually I post them on my social media as well. I know a lot of people do it as well. So kudos to you guys as well. Is I write a gratitude list. Every day I have a book and I just write, it's, I think it's, all the lines in the book, I think it's 31, 30, 30, somewhere around there. That's right, things that I'm grateful for. I thank God for the team. I thank God for life. I thank him for my wife. I thank him for great sex. I thank him for ganja. I thank him for oxygen. I thank him for a positive mental attitude. I thank him for discipline, accountability, willpower. I thank him for faith, desire, belief. I thank him for vision. I thank him for leverage income. I thank him for residual income. I thank him for secret direct. I thank him for mentorship. I thank him for joy and happiness. I thank him for church. I thank him for the Bible. I thank him for the power of prayer. I thank him for, for moments of pleasure. I thank him for curled up toes. I thank him for all that things. But my point is, I give thanks every morning. And you see, when you bring yourself to a position of gratitude, it's hard it is so difficult to be upset when you're grateful. I don't, I don't even know if it's possible, but um, I think it was Audrey Hepburn said nothing is impossible. So I'm, I'm just leaving that 0.1%, but it's, it's so difficult to have, to, to be jealous when you're grateful. It's, it's difficult to be grudgeful when, when you're great. It's, it's difficult to be, have experienced any type of negative emotion if you're grateful. And we all have the, we all have the power to, take ourselves to a place of gratitude because we all have so much things that we are grateful for. Who on the land thankful for oxygen? <laughs> Who on the land thankful for food? Who on the land thankful for your family? That you have health? Who, who on the land is grateful that you have life? We all have the power to intentionally bring our, our, ourselves to a space of gratitude. Uh, if you're in a space of gratitude, it's, it's, it's a great experience. It's a great time. So the fourth thing is make a gratitude list. Write it down. And, and don't just, if you're doing this, and I've been doing it for years, it can get to a point where it's just kind of routine and you just kind of write things down. No, stop and think about the thing that you're grateful for. 
participate while you're making this. Don't just write the things you always write. Just, just participate. Stop and think about the things that you're grateful for and write those things down. I'm telling you, it's, it's a powerful thing. It will change your life. The fourth way to win day, make a gratitude list. Next thing, affirmations. And this is one of my favorite topics because I'm, this, this, this has changed my life. This is so powerful. One of my favorite quotes, from one of my favorite people, the sharp Brazilian dude over here. It says, the most powerful words that enter your subconscious mind are those words that you say to you. Say it one more time. The most powerful words that enter your subconscious mind are those words that you say to you. So I guess the question you should ask yourself is, what do, we, what do you say to you? What do I say to me? What, what does Brittany say to Brittany? What does David say to David? What does Marjorie say to Marjorie? And see those, those things, whether you're realizing or recognizing that those things are the reason why you're in the situation that you're in right now. If you read the book, What to Say When You Talk to Yourself, that book changed my life. The audio from Byron Chuck, Reset Your Other Parts, changed my life. It talks about this. It talks about affirmation. Yes, and I mentioned earlier incantations, affirmation. For me, it's the same thing. You should, it, should, it should have emotion when, you, when you're saying whatever you're saying should definitely have emotion. Right, but in that book, what to say is talk to yourself. It breaks down how you get results. And you know, I should do a training on this. Matter of fact, I'm going to do a training. But how you get results, basically, your actions give you your results. Right, your actions give you your results. Um, um, what gives you your actions is your your motivations, your your feelings, gives you your 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 actions, which give you your results, and your attitude gives you your feelings, which gives you your actions, which give you your results. Your belief systems drives your attitude, which drives your feelings, which drives your actions, which get your results. But there's one, the, your thoughts push your beliefs. And one layer lower than thoughts is your programming. And your program is your environment, the things that you hear, the things that you read. One of the most powerful parts of program is the words that you say. And as my good friend says over here, the most powerful words that enter your subconscious mind are those words that you say to you. So it's a good idea to be intentional about the words that you say to you. And as this Mike Yarnell says on the audio, when you say things to yourself, it does not matter if you believe it. The subconscious mind does not care if it's a truth or a lie. You say it with emotion and it comes to pass. And, and on the audio, Byron Shaw research our other part. And we, I think we had this exercise this week. I think we had this exercise this week, didn't we? Yeah. If you could pick your situation in every year of your life. And, and this is something that I talk about all the time. If you've heard from me, you've heard this before. And you're going to hear it again. You're probably going to hear it forever because it's so important. And, and there's a lot of you that's hearing me right now, but you're not accepting this because you're not doing it. It sounds good. It sound great, but you're not doing it because you don't believe. But I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what you believe. Just do it and watch your life change. Because, I mean, what you're not doing right now, how is that working? What you got to lose? That's how I felt when, when I started. What I got to lose? I heard Matt Morris say doing it. Matt Morris is super successful. I want to be like him. So if he's doing it, pfft. I keep that Mark said it doing it. Hey, Chris Bosk is doing it. I mean, I'm gonna do it too. You should. And every situation of life, you could pick it. If you could pick it, what would it be? When you figure that out, write that down. I'll have a hundred million dollars in the bank. Uh, I'll have an incredible relationship with my spouse. I'll be a tip top shape. I'm 100% healthy. I'm the greatest network marketer in the world. Write that stuff down. Write it down and, and, and um, put together these affirmations in the present tense and read it every day with emotion like it's already happened. And your life changes. I promise you, life changes. So affirmation number five. Number six, and we do this as a team, read a Proverbs a day. A chapter a day. There's 31 books in Proverbs, 31 days in the month. It's, just, it's the second today, so we, we, we pick some from, from Proverbs too. But this is something I've been doing for... Whew, long time, I think over three years, maybe going on four years now, but every day, a proverb. And I just do proverb one to 31 over and over and over and over and over again. And as a team, we adapted this. And at the beginning of the call, we, we talk about proverbs. And you know, thank you guys so much for participating in that. Um, please save the question to the end or the comments. But re read a proverb every single day. There's 31 books in this. So the first you read one, the second you read one, and so on and so on and so forth, right? And it's really, we talked about, in, in the training, may God your business party, we talk about army in the mind. And <laughs> Proverbs was written by the wisest man in history, Solomon. 
So definitely, definitely, there's a lot you can learn from the wisest man in the history. And you know, for me, I've been doing this for a while. Anybody that's been doing this, and we've been doing this as a group, I'm sure people can relate. Every time I read it, I get different things. I see scriptures sometimes that I, I never noticed before. And I've been reading it every day for, for every month for a long time. And I might read Proverbs 6 and there's, there's a, a verse in there that I, I don't remember ever reading before. I sometimes I read something that I read several times, but God just speaks to me differently this time. It's incredible. And I, I have some of them on the screen. There it is. That, uh, uh, Proverbs 29, verse 18. This is a popular where there's no vision, the people perish. Proverbs 3, verse 5. I love this one. Put your trust in the Lord and lean, lean not on, 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 all, on thine own understanding. I apologize. Proverbs 6, verse 2. It's wrong on the slide. I share this all the time. Thou art sneered by the words of thy mouth. Proverbs 13, 22. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Proverbs 15, verse 1. This one's so integral. A soft answer turned away wrath, but grievous words through anger. There's so many more problems we could talk about. But this, this, is the, this, this for me is also like, it's like adding value to you. Personal development. I think Proverbs is personal development. Like all Proverbs is personal development. <laughs> and the Bible is the number one personal development book. So the sixth way to win the day, read a proverb every single day. Number seven, visualize. Let us see it. T. Harv Ecker, in his book, Secrets of a Millionaire Mind, he says that the outer world is nothing but a reflection of your inner world. See, you have to experience it in here first before you get it out there. Uh, there I, I heard a story of somebody, he said he, he overheard a conversation of, of two people talking about Walt Disney, Disney World. And I said, yo man, this Disney World is incredible. And, and they said, man, oh my goodness. It's such a shame that Walt Disney never got to see the finished product. Because uh, you guys know or may not know, Walt Disney died before Disney World was completed. And they would say, man, it's such, oh man, that's such, it's such a shame. And Walt well, never got a chance to see it. Well, guys, they had it wrong. See, if Walt didn't see it, we wouldn't be seeing it. Walt saw it in here first. And that's how we have Disney World all over the world now today to actually go and see it. It's the same way with everything. Everything that's created started in here. So if your goal is crown royal or whatever your goal is in whatever area of your life, you have to see it. You have to experience it first. That's why I love on Mondays and, and you know, the guys who come on on Mondays and participate, kudos to you. The guys who come on on Mondays and just listen and don't participate, you, 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 you're missing it. When we, when we have people come and give their crown royal speech, you know what's happening? They're experiencing it. They're knowing the feeling of, of, of giving a speech in front of hundreds of thousands of people. And if they keep doing that, they're going to attract that in your life. So you, you have to experience it. When we come on, I was a catch up read on the Crown Royal interview and, 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 this, and, and the, 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 we, call it, we call it a Crown Royal interview them. When you're not participating, you're, you're missing the opportunity to experience your goal. And that's why we do things like that on Mondays. I think nobody should miss Mondays. Because Mondays are the days we do those exercises. Um, vision boards, like I'm in my office right now. I forgot to move my computer. When I look around, I look up there and I see that I'm success. I look, I see I'm a money magnet, I'm a champion. I'm the best clothes in the world. I, I, I have a millionaire mind. I look, I, I see I'm the greatest entrepreneur. I see vision, gratitude. I, I see Alexis, Mr. Marian Drova. Mr. Marian Trova, the life of a professional speaker. I see that I'm spreading love, LNG. I look over there, I see, I see my volume. I see, I see Ruby volume up the stuff. Baba said every little thing gonna be all right. But I see my goals everywhere. You have to see it. You have to see it. You have to see it. And that's how we get it. So, and, and you know, we're also, some, we're, sometimes we're so busy that we miss the important things. So we're also too busy making calls or too busy doing the work or too busy doing whatever that we, we won't stop and take a second to do something like this because we don't, we don't see it as important. But it's things like this that change the game. If you listen to Darren Walker, War Room, he talks about his room that <laughs> makes the cars and every, all his goals is everywhere. Matt Marsh talked about when, when he was coming up in the business, he had sticky notes all around the house with his goals. He had to, he had to see his goals, he had to see it everywhere. So number seven in winning the day is visualize. Number eight. Personal development. 
everybody on the line would gladly take $10,000 a month if you could think the way you think. If you could do the things that you're doing right now. If you could be the person that you are today. Everybody on the line would take six-pack abs. If you could just sit on the couch and watch potato chips, eat potato chips and watch binge Netflix and do the things that you're doing, eat the things that you're eating, doing the activities that you're doing. No one on the line, including myself, I'm talking to me too, is, is Crown Royale. No one. No one on the line is red diamond, blue diamond. You're not that person. I'm not that person. You have to become that person. We say this all the time, success is something that you attract by the person that you become, not, not, not something, something that you chase. You don't chase success. You chase becoming a better person and then you attract success. And again, this is something that people don't have the time for. They, they don't make time for this because they're too busy chasing the goals. They're too busy doing this. It's like, it's like my favorite analogy when it comes to this. It's like you're driving the car, the gas light's on. But you got to get to a destination. So you too busy to stop at the gas station and buy gas. Let's say it one more time in case somebody missed that. You're driving somewhere far. Your gas light's on. The gas station's right there, but you, you late. So you too busy to stop at the gas station to buy a gas. Because you got to get to where you got to go. That's exactly like some of y'all's journey to the top. Exactly. That's exactly your journey to the top. Personal development is the gas that keeps you going, that keeps you moving forward, that makes you a better person. Like, like I said before, empty your wallet into your mind, your mind fills up your wallet. In the book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, one of the, one of the habits is sharpen your saw. Same thing, personal development. I talks about the, the guy spending hours trying to saw down the tree. Hours. And he pointed out, had he taken an hour to sharpen his axe, he'd have cut down the tree much quicker. Guys, if you said the hour a day to sharpen your axe, you reach the goal much quicker. Number nine, I put these together, exercise and meditation. And, and success is, is not just financial. It is, it's many facets. And you, you, wealth, health is wealth, is one of my favorite, my favorite, favorite um, quotes. Because imagine being a billionaire, but you're bedridden. <laughs> imagine having all this money, but you're too sick to spend it, too sick to enjoy it. We have one temple, one body. And you know, it's great being a part of the secret where we're going to stress taking care of yourself. So exercise is key. You have to do physical activity. You have to take care of the temple. I heard Matt Morris say this one time. It was, it was very profound for me. He's like, it's better to get up 30 minutes early and go to the gym than to stay in bed and snooze for 30 minutes. It's better to get up 30 minutes early, go to the gym, than to snooze for 30 minutes in bed. You're going to have a much better day when you do that. And as far as meditation, I know, especially like people like me, it's hard to sit still. Because I, I got so much things I got to do. I, I don't have enough time in the day. I'm, I'm sure somebody can relate. I don't have enough time in the day. Yeah, I, 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 can, I, I get it. I can relate. But even the Bible, it talks about the importance of sitting still. Some of my, my best, some of my best um, talks or some of my best ideas as far as building the business, just best, it comes when I'm just sitting down and, and just, a long time just thinking. I know Wager they and and the wellness group they have a, a meditation call at seven forty five every morning. Which I used to jump on that. I don't jump on that anymore. I do meditation on my own time. But it's it's important to sit still and just allow your mind to go where it goes. Because <laughs> there's so much things in your mind. There's there's so much ideas inside of you. There's so much things that 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 are, are waiting to come out. If you just give yourself a chance for it to come out. Don't keep distracting yourself all the time. Spend some time with you. Spend some time to actually think. Because most of us don't think. We just kind of go through the motions. We're on autopilot. So it's important for the exercise time. It's important for that, that, that quiet 
time to meditate. So number nine, exercise and meditation. And the last one, number 10, meet and greet and depart with heart. Now, what do I mean by that? I used to always joke around and say, when, I, when I'm in Jamaica and I ask somebody how they're doing, they say one of three things. And I, hey, this has been my experience. Don't judge me. How you doing? Not bad. Good so far. Well, I'm okay. <laughs> How you doing? Not bad. Good so far. I'm okay. Zig added over. Well, under the circumstances. If you ask me how I'm doing, you get a totally different answer. And you get this, you get a similar answer every single time. And <laughs> it's funny because it's at a point for me, well, for me. It's where I don't even think about it. It's just my natural reaction. If someone asks me what I'm doing, I'm going to speak life over me. I don't care what's going on externally. I'm having an incredible day. <laughs> and, you know, it, it, this ties in with what we talk about affirmations. See, every time somebody asks you how you are doing, you get the opportunity to speak life over your life. So why would you not take it? Every time somebody asks you how you doing. And if you think about it, let's say in your estimation, your day is not as incredible as you'd like it to be. And somebody says, hey, how you doing? I said, well, <laughs> rough, 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 January, rough. No, no, I'm going to father. Let's say you respond like that, right? And let's say somebody that has the same exact situation like you, and this somebody asks him, how you doing? They say, oh man, I'm incredible, man. I'm happy to be alive. Both of y'all have the same external situations. But in that instance, when you answer the question, who has a better situation? The person who spoke life over your life. And if that person has said, boy, I'm not now, but if, they, if he changed the answer, say, hey, my boy, that is good, my boss. I'm, I'm happy to be alive. His situation improves just because of his words. Again, the most powerful words that enter your subconscious mind are your, the words that you say to you. I'm going to give you a twist to it. When somebody asks you how you do it, they say, I'm incredible. Do you know that you, you kind of make them feel a little better as well? Because they're, they're probably shocked just based on your answer, but it, it, it improves their morale as well. So not only are you speaking life over you, but you, you, you speak a little bit of life over them. Um, I think I heard Les Brown say, so love and happiness is like perfume. You can't spray some on without sprinkling a little bit on other people. The Bible says life or death in the part of the tongue. So when you talk about you, the option is life, the option is death. When somebody asks you how you're doing, if you want to win day, my advice to you would be, when somebody says, how are you doing? Speak life over your life. Another thing is when you leave somebody, when it's a depart with heart, when you leave, don't say, I'll see you later. You know, the real thing, I'll see you later. All right, tomorrow. Yeah, man, tomorrow. Yeah, you link tomorrow. How about see you at the top? I have an incredible rest of your day. Yo, now we change the world together, man. Stay up. When you leave somebody, you have an opportunity to speak life over somebody else's life. So uh, I say, take the opportunity. And I'm going to spend a little time right here for a second, then we're going to close out the call. Jim Rohn says, service to many leads to greatness. Service to many leads to greatness. I'm sure we've all heard that. We probably all share that before and we, we share the sentence. Service to many leads to greatness. Service to many leads to greatness. Service to many leads to greatness, right? And sometimes when we think about service to many, I really analyze it. Service to many. It sounds like, all right, let's say, let's, let's use secret. So if, if we build a huge organization of like hundreds of thousands of people all over the world, and we impact people's life financially. We, we help people look better. We help people feel better. We help people experience the world. Hundreds of thousands of people. That is service to many. And you are absolutely right. That's a service. That's definitely service to many, right? That's service. Um, if you, let's say you, you finance, you're pretty good. And you, you give, give like a million dollars to this organization and that organization. That, that's service to many. And again, you'd be 100% right that service all that service yes but you, 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 you know what i realized let's say let's say i call so let's say i call um 
She was a nice. See, 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 let's see, I called Dwayne McKenzie today. I call him and he answered the phone. I miss Mr. Mr. McKenzie, sir. I just wanted to call you and thank you for being a model citizen. You're a great example in the community. Um, we appreciate and respect you, sir. Keep doing what you're doing, man. You're inspiring some more people, and you know we love you, my boss. Have a wonderful day. Have a help this one. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Yes, sir. Have a wonderful day, too. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. How you feel? Feel good, feel good. Absolutely. And and uh, that what that took what? Took less than 30 seconds. Guys, and, and the point, the point I'm trying to make is like giving appreciation to somebody at service. Recognizing somebody for for the, it, how inc everybody's incredible. Everybody has great. What's the word I'm looking for? Characteristics, highlighting and appreciating somebody's positive points at service, encouraging somebody, forgiving somebody. I'm not gonna get too deep in that, but forgiving somebody that that service. Uh, every day, every day we we all have the opportunity. In every interaction, we have the opportunity. In, in, in every every every. Every thought process, we have the opportunity to serve somebody. And if you guys remember the audio, I have to listen to it again. With Simon saying, oh, leaders eat last. And he breaking down the science and how you feel. Like, with, so, so me and Mr. Mackenzie had a conversation. Uh, he feels great. Do you know how I feel? I feel incredible when, when, when you give to others, when you help somebody. You know, you know me feel about Jody and so we're raising money. I want the time to go high, come in and stop. I want us to shoot for like three grand or five, ten grand. I don't care. But, but you find that when you do something good for somebody else, the feeling that you, the, like, it's, it's, it's hard to explain it and put the words, but it's such an incredible feeling just by giving to somebody. And when that time I'm giving money, I argue, it was just even just giving a compliment, just complimenting somebody. All that service. So, I guess what, what I'm saying is when you when you when you make when when you get to a point where it's it's more about what you can do for the next person as opposed to what you can do for yourself without a doubt, you're winning every single day. So it's Wednesday. I don't have a job, y'all. So sometimes I get days mixed up. Don't don't judge me. So it's Wednesday, right? So let's all win today, win tomorrow, win the next day, and win next. I remember as Zig said, a, a, a day. Is a major week, and a week is a major month, and a month is a major year, and a year is a miniature lifetime. Happy Wednesday, ladies and gentlemen.